Live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for the Google Cloud Platform Live event. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, we start to see the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Robert Mahawal, Vice President of SaaS and Cloud Service at IDC, International Data Corporation. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much. So uh, you guys are our recent leading market research firm. What's the status, Who's, who owns what market share? What's the TAM? Give us the data, what's going on? <laughs> share with us the numbers. The number guys. Tell you the whole story. <laughs> so Amazon is the secretariat, thundering away, yeah. you know, the finish. I mean, they're obviously you know, going to win the triple crown early on in this game. But uh, you know, Google's got muscle. Um, I agree. What's the take on that? So, so we pretty much have a good win, place, show story to continue the metaphor. Uh, with uh, with Amazon commanding the biggest market share, they've been around the longest. I think they've they've uh, they've shown that they can leverage what they what they already built out in their infrastructure to support the retail business to uh, start selling compute and storage and networking. And Microsoft obviously had a huge interest in figuring out how do we migrate the operating system from the customer data center to our cloud. And they started work on that four, five, six years ago. Google, I think, is putting the most muscle into it. They've got the most points of presence. Uh, they, they spent the most money in the last year on infrastructure build out. So they are the new contender that I think we should be paying a lot of attention to. And they've got a unique angle to bring to the whole story. So I think it's a good thing to watch. What about the uh, other players? What IBM and HP are certainly disrupted by this big they get force of cloud. Um, IBM's making their moves with Blue Mix and Cloud Foundry, and certainly see Watson Analytics. The deal with Twitter, they're partnering with leaders. I, HP's got a new yeah. cloud group with some muscle, trying to put that sort of, are they going to just focus in on the IT side, their workloads? Yeah. And how does VMware fit into all this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big question. Well, so, so let, me, let me back up a little bit. Every tech company you know, sort of skates to where their opportunity is and where the customers are. They cannot ignore those guys. I think the key thing about IBM is, is they were very, they did done some smart things in the last couple of years. They had a huge uh, strategic outsourcing business, right, that they, they, they got from back in the old days, doing application management and, and IT outsourcing, and they said, this works pretty well, but we really can't define objects down to a granular level, we can't really software define our environments for tenancy, we have to buy uh, uh, a soft layer. That's a really important part of the strategy going forward, is to buy the infrastructure as a service. And then on top of that, they, could, they said, listen, we've got this portfolio of 100 SaaS applications, that's important for us to have. How can we open those things up and build this blue mix platform so that we can start to suck critical pieces of our applications, things that do things like fetch content, start a, start a collaboration, and allow developers to get access to it and build ne new stuff. That's really, they've got a great story, IBM does, and I think a lot of it is simply telling customers, you used to do this with us, now you can do this plus. And I think Google's a big part, or uh, Watson's, Watson's a big part of that story. I think HP is, a, is, a, is in a little bit more of an entrenched position because I think uh, they're throwing everything they can into Helion, but I think they've had not quite as big uptake as they wanted to on their, uh, their, their uh, public cloud uh, infrastructure. And I think they're, what they need to do is put more muscle into the services business, which is deep into verticals and tell them, listen, this is where you need to do all of your hosting with, with us, and we have the critical developer tools that they built out the last year on Helion. So, um, their support of, uh, of OpenStack, uh, OpenStack open stack controllers, stack is, is, a, is a huge thing. Obviously, Microsoft, IBM, HP, is they, everybody wants to be on the stage, right? They want to say, we at least have controllers that let you let you do things on OpenStack. We may not be, you know, built on OpenStack, but we're, we want to let you do things there. So that's a big part of the story. So too. since 2012, looking at the um, kind of the map of the landscape, I want to get your perspective on this. You see a lot of um, leaders and visionaries now turned into niche players. So really there's been a sea change. Right. Literally overnight, OpenStack is some say is in shambles. Um, some will say that with the advent of Microsoft now, renewed focus, Google moving up from visionary to leader, you have all these niche players, Joyant, Terramark, Savas, right. even CSC's in there, no mention of Dell, no mention of HP, no mention of IBM in this mix. Yeah. What's that mean? It's a good point. I think that the danger is when companies like CSC buy Service Mesh, for example, they all of a sudden give themselves huge net new capabilities to serve their customer base. And I think from, from all of their perspective, it's not how can we simply port uh, you know, change what we did for you 
last year or poured into the cloud or maybe uh, put a subscription model on the front end, but how can we offer you net new capability, either through partnership or, or through acquisition, uh, within the case of CSC, that's really where you can reach further and do better things. I think customers are, are we're going through a period where they're not really terrifically impressed by uh, by what they used to pay for licensed software, by the services they used to get from the from the from the big tech incumbents, and they're open to new ideas and, and uh, these new guys. So I got to ask you about CSC since you brought it up because yeah. we were just pontificating about the future of Dell and Dell being really innovating around supply chain, going direct, you know, uh, build to order. <laughs> yeah, I can white box some things here, but for the most part, what are they going to do? Cloud brokering? Some say, you know, Forrester guys are saying, hey, you know. Great cloud brokering, but yeah. CSC telegraphs a move there. It's interesting. They're a management yeah. consulting firm now offering a cloud brokering position for the customers. That's yeah. a very interesting play. Do you see that as a trend? I, I, I think it's. I think for Dell, it's the right move. I think they're going to gain a lot of uh, a lot of ability by being a bit more um, opaque by going pri by going private. And I think that having these uh, having these these deep deep legacy uh, um, uh, vertical ties is going to help them because. With the brokerage position, they could be uh, vendor neutral, and they could sort of say, "Listen, we're not in applications. We're not going to be in anybody's backyard." I think it's a smart play for them, and they've, they've, they've you know, gained Salesforce as a key partner in the cloud, cloud brokerage. Um, I think that they should probably stay there and, and get out of the, not go into the applications business. So, cloud services becomes the new go-to, go-to, build-to-order, if you will. So, the assembly of resources, yeah, the CSC and the Dells, telegraphs opportunities that if you're not going to have your own cloud. You might as well own something. Yeah, it's a great analogy. I think I think it is it is a, a, a way for them, and, and they and they can they can very reasonably take take a sort of a, um, um, center of gravity um, provider position and say, listen, we can do the e-commerce, we can do the integration, we can do the critical things, but we're not going to compete with Microsoft. We're not going to compete with with IBM on core applications and or SAP or Oracle or any of our huge partners because this is the guys uh, who supply all the applications that that uh, the Dell does the. Uh, uh, the, AP, the the application outsourcing businesses with so so they're not they're not sort of biting the hand that feeds them but it lets them sort of stay in the game stay relevant and say listen we will be the assembler and provide all the integration and I think integration is really pretty key. So key I got to ask you from an ID, IDC perspective because we've been following IDC obviously for many many decades obviously owns the market share reports for certainly a lot of these guys like HP Cisco sure. and whatnot um, but that was the old way ports and market share gear right. how are you looking at it as an analyst um, trying to dissect the, the complicated market, what the TAM is, a lot of cross overlap between you know, DevOps, SaaS, you know, yeah. services. How are you looking at the market? I mean, TBR put out a report, I don't know how they're quantifying AWS a 22% share. Obviously, it seems relatively interesting, good yeah. order of magnitude relative to the others, but how do you guys look at this? Yeah, it's, it's a really tough, uh, tough thing to do because uh, most of our market shares, most of our competitors' market shares are based on revenue. Right, based on net new revenue, uh, based on a run rate of revenue, and so that kind of all goes out the window when you start talking about uh, new versus install base, right? Uh, and and what, what really leadership means. We have had to take our software taxonomy, on which the, the whole view of the cloud is based, based on what kind of capability do you bring? Is it collaboration? Is it CRM? and throw some of that out of the window because what we're starting to see, especially in, in the platform as a service arena, is that we're seeing new, uh, new ways of combining uh, 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 different functionalities to, 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 uh, that, that are brought to market in, in, in new ways. So for example, um, uh, integration and service orchestration. Usually they're, they're, they're in the package software world, they're delivered very, very differently. Here in the, in the cloud, uh, you know, Pivotal can deliver that in the, in the same package on a subscription basis. So we're taking the, the 98 or so uh, uh, software taxonomy categories, and in some cases we're having to say, this doesn't make sense anymore. We're going to have to recombine them in new ways, and that, that d dramatically changes who the leaders are. So that's you're driving that by consumption, by the buyer. By so consumption, it's, yeah. So it's, it's almost work, almost workload based, right? You can almost migrate into there, because people are spinning things up, spinning things down, assigning tasks and workloads to different clouds based on fit. Yep. Well, you, know, you brought up a great point also. How do you evaluate, how do you measure something when it's not bought, consumed for three years, and then you know, end of life, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if, the, if the workload consumption is intermittent, 
how do you know whether they're are they, and, and are they still on that platform? And, and, and we're trying to figure out what's the best measure of that. Is it is it do they own that asset or do they have license to that asset for more than an hour, more than a day, more than a right. month? What means that they're a user of that asset in a meaningful way? It's very very it tough. Almost like an electron, like a meter, right? Like a You're meter like a on meter. the house. I mean, yeah. like the guy that was in the keynote, the atomic picture guys. They spun up twelve thousand tours. They ran it for about five minutes and then they turned it back off again. Right. So where does that fit in terms of market share? We're, we're toying around with measures like a meter by, be, by being able to say, listen, no matter how many times you, 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 you started and stopped usage of this, what was your monthly bill? What was your annual bill? Uh, and how, how, how is, is that a relevant way to measure consumption of infrastructure and platform resources? That's starting to make some mo more sense, but we, we're a long way from figuring it out. How do you tell who's winning? I mean, that's, that's the thing that we're trying to understand. I mean, we have kind of anecdotal, yeah. we can kind of feel it, who's winning. But as an analyst, that's a tough road. Right. So like, how do you, Benchmark that. Yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 the way we've been doing it thus far has been basically based on revenue. And for public companies, that's, that's, a, that's a 10K picture. Uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of sort of intermittent buzz throughout the course of the year um, on you know the, the kind of deals that are made, the kind of uh, marquee customers that come on board. But at the end of the day, the way all these companies operate, because this is what they comp sales on, this is what they build quotas around, this is what they invest in new businesses around. It's it's, it's money, it's revenue. I know you guys had some uh, your and your cohorts and your other parts of the department have had the, addressed this challenge with VCE and Cisco and HB and who's the leader in server shares. And because now you got this bundling effect. Amazon is the poster boy of right. bundling, right? They're the masters. They're hiding the ball, some say, and you know, people try to dice it. They don't break out the numbers right. I need to address. Right. So the people are always trying to inspect that. Andrew Reese and had a post on it, you know, the yeah. profitless business that everyone's buying. Um, I just read the UBS's report on this. Certainly, Amazon's a buy overall, as a retailer, including AWS. Right. But any of us specifically, you got to break that out. How do you get your arms around that beast called yeah, AWS? It, it's, it's a particularly challenging thing with AWS because uh, companies like AWS that are really massive scale, they can go to ODM, they can actually, uh, they can actually go out and influence the, uh, the on the ground fab and, and, and have, it, have it change in as little as 48 hours to better fit their system, their way of doing things. It's phenomenal when you talk to, to Amazon about scale and how they achieve scale and efficiency. Uh, they said last year that they had a couple guys working full time on how to optimize a $248 power supply piece. Working full time on this because they know at the end of the day, if they can get that thing to hum just right, they can save in scale, you know, a, a, a dollar. So it's a big deal for them, and they're very sophisticated at that. They don't break out what, what they buy, uh, and, and uh, it's been something that we've been trying for a long time to figure out. And at the end of the day, we have to do some some um, some working backwards uh, work based on the number of uh, workloads they support. That's detective work. You go through their trash, looking at their POs. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's detective work yeah. for you guys, right? That's exactly right. Well, exactly talk right. Talk a little bit about utilization and really. The, the sweeping impact that cloud have been able to deliver in terms of utilization of computing resources, where there was so much fat before, yeah, yeah. just so much fat. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, there there are varying estimates for depending on the kind of resource, but just in general, I think an efficient data center uses about thirty percent of its resources adequately, right? So, so this is this maybe make it a five-year-old picture. Thirty percent is probably about right. I think that number is probably still around 50%, but when you start to sort of sort of, sort of break the world into what you currently run, and and and, uh, and maybe you can operationalize it a bit more efficiently and build a private cloud out of it, versus what you set source as net new that you can very granularly mirror and, and use efficiently, I think the overall effect of this rate goes goes up a little bit. But even even so, I think in, in a large organization you're still fighting against so much in terms of. Uh, you know, uh, um, um, asset equity and, and what you want to keep and keep and reuse, and your skills, your aging IT skills. I, right. I think that those things all figure into that that whole notion of how efficient you can really be. Right. And on the security thing, you know, it used to be that was always the first thing that came up when talking about cloud. You know, nobody wants to go to the cloud. Security, security, security from an enterprise perspective. Are we are we past that? Is that yeah. is that table sticks now in terms of there's a there's a presumption of a level of security that that's not the inhibitor to adoption. Yeah, I, I don't think it's. I don't, think I don't think we're past that yet. I think there's a recognition that it's a, it's an absolute reality, and that everybody's got to deal with it. Um, I often make the point that uh, something like one times U.S. GDP trades over over financial services wires every day, right? So this is a we've been doing this for a long time, and we're going to get deeper and deeper into it. I think it's a matter of uh, of, of you know, sort of how you how you build yourself 
uh, uh, um, redundancy in those and, and, and uh, backup operations into your system if you're an enterprise company. And uh, the level of willingness you have is if you're a consumer to sort of say it is what it is. If I if I'm not paying for a service, I have no expectations about about uh, data leakage or about breach behind that. If I am paying for it, then um, I need to be to be a better uh, consumer of SLAs, a better understander of SLAs, and know what I'm getting myself into. I, I think it's not going to really be a huge speed bump to more to greater adoption, but I think it's a recognition that everybody's finally coming around to. It's just it's just not a matter of, of if it's but it's when. Right, right. right. And I wonder, as you said earlier, that you know there's a lot of big players. You know, Google has a unique angle, a unique point of view, unique entry into this marketplace. If you can dig into that a little bit deeper as you see that. Yeah. So a couple things there that I think are, are really interesting about what we heard today. Um, a, a lot of a lot of what we heard around uh, Kubernetes and around um, um, you know. A GitHub and the Google Google um, Container Engine. Um, uh, these these are these are things that are really really meaningful to developers, particularly you know commercial and enterprise developers, but particularly I would say uh, enterprise developers. To me, that seems like it's a it's a piece of the equation, a piece of the overall. Uh, you know, if you think about IT as being dev divided roughly into network ops, DevOps, and run ops, um, this is the, this is the DevOps piece without a doubt. And Amazon has not shown a great deal of willingness to spend a lot of time there. They're much more like build, compile, host, uh, and we'll give you access to all the resources that you need to, to do that effectively and, and, and stay on for the life of, life of the application, presumably. I think, I think Google's uh, position here is they have got a large applications portfolio. Right, I was going to say, do right? you think that's because they have it's, such a much broader application portfolio? For it's huge, and Amazon doesn't business. have it at all. Right. We're big believers that if you have that application sweet spot, that the natural place to want to develop is around where those applications are. There's a lot of there's a lot of gravity in data. There's a lot of gravity in applications. It's natural to, if I'm going to build a new front end or a new UI or a new uh, a mobile extension or whatever it is to my application, I'm going to want to be on Google to do that. It makes a lot of sense to me. The thing that, that they that I think that they need to work on more that I see that Amazon's put a lot of time into is a migration story. I've got old applications, I've got, I, I still want to do things to improve my efficiency in running them. It makes sense to run it on third party infrastructure. Google, help me move those things that, that are not going away to cloud infrastructure so I can I can manage them in a, in a, in a way that I manage my new applications that I'm building. That's that's a story that Google still needs to figure out. So talk about Kubernetes impact to um, the cloud. Obviously it's getting a lot of buzz here. We heard Google say that it's the biggest ramp they've seen on adoption yeah. in a long time. Um, what is Kubernetes and how does that relate to things like Mesos and SaltStack? And do you see Kubernetes being run on Amazon? Um, it, Cause is that, yeah, that's, that, great. <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> that would be uh, That would be a, a good story. I would write about that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. only bring up the best of the cube. <laughs> the hardest question. This is the Rubik's Cube here. So help, help us, help us understand that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I think, uh, so, so Kubernetes is an open source project that, uh, uh, that, that allows for more efficient hosting, uh, con uh, hosting of containers um, and, uh, and, 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 and doing all kinds of things around the, the containers. So you can do event-based workflow uh, on containers. Um, you can do uh, a more single pane of glass management of containers. So it's it's phenomenal technology, and there's there's a lot. Of, you know, I agree with what Google has said. There's this is some of the fastest uptake of any open source project. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, Linux, Git, uh, OpenStack. Go Lang help. Go Lang Yeah, well, I mean, without a doubt. Um, and, and so it's it's been it's been a phenomenal ramp up. I think at the end of the day, you know, like with, with all these open source projects, is is you know they they eventually fork or evolve into something else. And what useful what what can be usefully be done at the enterprise level um, to make it to, to take it from being a project, uh, a, you know, a, a great project tool to being something that we that we bet our our, our, our enterprise dollars on. And uh, I, I think that's the next step. For Have Kubernetes. you seen anyone use Kubernetes in AWS? Um, I can't say that I have, but but I but I, I wouldn't have uh, that much insight into it personally, so I couldn't say. I don't want to rule it out. So SaltStack's here. I didn't get a chance to talk to them, but they got a lot of traction. Yep. Mesos yeah, has yeah. obviously got an open source project as well. Interesting, you know, Chef, Puppet, these tools yeah. have been very successful. Now all of a sudden, Salt, I'll put some salt on that food. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll uh, Chef is getting a lot of traction. People are standardizing on on SaltStack. I talked to a couple of practitioners earlier in the week. They said, you know, we're moving to SaltStack. We had all this, you know, CF Engine, all this stuff kind of around and SALT was a better solution. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't look upon SALT as being so much a, of a, I look upon it as being a, a, an extension of, 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 of a way to use Chef better, 
Um, you use cookbooks better, essentially. Um, and that there is a, there is a, a metaphor buried in there, I'm sure. But uh, it's um, it's uh, it's it's they are getting a lot of traction. At the end of the day. Speed, speed of building applications. I mean, it, you, it, it, as you guys were saying today, a lot of times you know you build, you, you hit, you hit a, a stumble in your in your code, and then you want to be able to identify and tag where that is, and then you want to be able to iterate and not have that be the thing that slows the application down. Um, I think that you know Salt helps that that that, and they they're going to become very popular among developers. Robert, I want to thank you for coming on the cube. Great to have IDC on. I want you to give you the final word. Share with the folks out there what's going on here at the Google event. What's the big news? What's the big smoke signal coming out of this show that you, that's uh, worthy of taking note of. Yeah, great, thanks. So, so for me, the exciting things, um, the, the Google uh, container engine is, is, is exciting for me. I think container, container, container. This is the story coming out of Google today. They say we've been using containers for the last two or three years. We use containers for everything that we do. Uh, and I think that containers are very exciting to, uh, especially to enterprise developers because they, they, they point to mobility. Nobody wants to be tied into to a, a cloud. There's a lot of strategic safety by saying, we're going to use something that lets us be, be, be mobile. So I think that's really, really key. The other thing that kind of got me excited outside of Kubernetes and the other developments is the notion of the cloud, um, the cloud interconnect engine. So, um, so they're, you know, uh, Amazon has got Direct Connect. It's hugely popular with their um, Google Virtual Cloud um, uh, platform users. Um, uh, Equinix has got a, a very similar thing with, I think it's called EIX. So this is a big deal. Um, and, and given the number of points of presence that, that Google has, I think that this could be, this interconnect thing could be a really big deal. That solves the Netflix problem we've been talking about that people can relate to, which is yeah. the middleman, the service provider throttling deep packet inspection, yeah. that cloud, you know, the service provider, they can go direct into Google. Thank you, T-Mobile. hearing. <laughs> <laughs> We're here breaking it down, of course, bringing all the analysts in, talking about what's happening with the horse on the track. Uh, Amazon really running away with it at this point. Google, great big muscle entering the market, big splash in the pool with some real tech and obviously Microsoft's out there and the folks of others kind of niche and niche players trying to make, make their way. This is theCUBE, always breaking it down here live in San Francisco at the Google Developer Conference, Google Platform Live, Google Cloud Platform Live. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.